Uh, back to the Jags, uh, just to lead off this noon hour here from Furniture Source in the Avenue Mall. Uh, Gabe Davis, we talked about at the top of the show. Like, what's his role going to be? I think we're sleeping on that part of it just because there's been so many other storylines, not intentionally. Uh, he actually missed the first week uh, or first couple practices of OTAs while he had a baby, and uh, he was back. He's still limited, too. I think that's a, you know, the Jacks have some players that are kind of limited yeah. coming into this whole camp and hopefully be healthy. I mean, Gabe Davis, uh, we mentioned Foye Lewick in yesterday with the offseason wrist surgery, and then even Eric Armstead. So a couple of these newcomers come over with some things that and this is coming off a year where the last six weeks were injury riddled so yeah. I, I i'm I'm not overly concerned about it but i'm just wondering maybe we should be a little bit more concerned about some of these things that these guys are returning from no i mean you definitely got to take into consideration at the same time you hope that you know they have the best um you know in terms of therapy and stuff in terms of not pushing them too far too fast and they can come back 100 percent. i mean it's OTAs right now. You know, it's a time to learn, not a time to put the floor to the gas and see exactly push somebody too far. But, yeah, it's in the back of your mind. But injuries happen every single year, Brent. And and it's the athlete's job to overcome those and be okay. Well, the good news is we're not talking about I mean, torn like, Achilles and, like Aaron and, and yeah, things yeah. like that. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we're – where you wonder about. And, and actually, there's a lot of hope in some of the health of Trevor, who looks good, right? Devon Hamilton, who could bounce back. So Christian Kirk is healthy. And, and as he showed us last year, he, or, or ended up saying, he played on that for a while before it actually tore mm -hmm. and had to uh, go get the groin fix. So um, maybe the Jags can have one of those healthy years. Uh, that's going to be critical uh, because it, it certainly uh, was a big factor, it looked like, in the collapse of last season. But we're talking about Gabe Davis, and yesterday Marcel Robinson and maybe even some other folks were able to catch up with Gabe after practice. I think he's an important part of this. He's a big play machine. He can have these huge games. We said he might be able to win you a football game. Almost feel like he did it single-handedly. That never happens, but it could feel like that statistically, where he goes for like a buck 30 and three scores. Like he has those kind of games sometimes, and that's a win right there when you have one of those kind of games. What kind of role will he play? Obviously, he's acting Acclimating to Jacksonville, back here in the state of Florida, and uh, here's what Gabe Davis had to say after practice yesterday. Obviously, uh, kind of getting used to getting out here. Um, tell me, what are the early thoughts, early feelings about getting back here and getting on the grass? Um, you know, it's good to be out here with the guys, uh, getting to know a lot of the guys on the team. Uh, obviously, me being new here, uh, but it's a great atmosphere, good people everywhere. Um, love being back in Florida; that's huge. Uh, so, it's definitely uh, it's been a change, but it's been a great change. Obviously, you're kind of working yourself back, you know, from the knee injury, but, you know, being worked in, you know, obviously as a veteran, is it kind of, you find it kind of tough to sort of kind of hold yourself back a little bit? Yeah, it's been a little difficult coming to a new team, but then having to take it uh, step by step, slowly not being able to get out there to guys go compete um, and be able to, you know, go out there and make some plays with my boys, but uh, trying to be supportive the best way I know how and be a good teammate. What have you seen from the guys being on the sideline? Not necessarily, not necessarily on the sideline, but not being in team drills, you know, getting a chance to kind of watch and take some mental reps. What have you seen from the rest of the guys in the room? The guys are being real intentional. Um, that's what that, that's what this game is about. You got you to gotta have intent in everything that you do. I feel like the guys uh, take that very seriously. And it's been great watching these guys grow and become better this year. What's the transition been like? Obviously, this is your first kind of activity with the team so far to kind of get in there but not, you know, learning but not – bringing too much of a veteran presence, but showing what you were able to do as well? Um, it's good. Uh, it's a different role here, um, but it was a super easy transition. These guys here are great. Um, it's so different from coming in, you know, as a rookie where no one kind of not knowing you and then obviously having some years behind you and then everyone kind of already knowing who you are. So definitely a different experience, um, different role. Uh, I love it, though. It, it's awesome. It's helping me grow as a player. Um, and again, I mean, couldn't ask for a better group of guys that we have out here. What role do you envision having on the team, what they've communicated to you so far? What are you looking forward to about that? Uh, just trying to be a great teammate, uh, do everything they ask me, you know, whether if it's going there in the B gap and go, you know, take on a block with the safety or go catch, you know, touchdowns deep. I mean, you got to be able to do it all and show the guys behind you uh, that, you know, you can do whatever it takes to win. So that's my mindset coming in. How's it been kind of working with Trevor, getting to know him a little bit? Trevor's great. Um, he's a great quarterback. Uh, watched him from afar. Uh, being from Florida, so I always kind of watch the Florida teams uh, as it is. But great player. Uh, you know, we're all still growing together, getting the chemistry down. Uh, me and him are probably definitely, when it comes to more closer to camps, still be getting together, trying to get that chemistry down, get some, get the plays in my head, and, uh, you know, keep that, keep that thing going.
He scored a touchdown against his team last year in London. Uh, Tyson Campbell, I think, was on you. But yeah. what about this defensive back group stands out, at least early? I know you're not going full in the team stuff, mm -hmm. but... Yeah, no, I let, that yeah, 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 no, I let them know when I got here. <laughs> no, I let them know. Those guys are great. Um, I, I, I had, I had, uh, the, Jacksonville was a team I was like, you know, I, I want to show them what I'm about, you know, because you never know what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? Now look what happens, you know, so, um, but definitely uh, have a lot of respect for him. Uh, you know, took that, took that, um, that one-on-one -on -one very seriously because uh, he's such a great player. Um, and you want to be able to make those plays against guys like that. Um, so, but we have a great group of guys uh, in the defensive uh, defensive room. Uh, added some new guys as well, so it's it's looking good. Training camp competition should be good, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah training camp is going to be great. Uh, Doug's talking about how it's going to be tough and physical, so uh, the boys are ready to go. One last one for me. You, talk, you talked about uh, the explosiveness of the offense. I was a buzzword that Press Taylor used not long ago. Um, when you hear sort of things, those sentiments coming from him, like you know that's something that they want to add, something that may have been lacking you know, in previous years. You know, for yourself, you just mentioned it. You know, what, how does that make you feel? And obviously, I got to imagine that's something that you're looking forward to getting into. Uh, I feel like when he says that, he, he, he's being truthful. Um, they just got, we just brought BT, uh, deep there from LSU, had 17 touchdowns. Me, I averaged 17 yards a catch. I uh, had a lot of deep balls down the field as well. Um, so I know they want that deep ball aspect more in their offense. Uh, so I definitely, when he says that, you know, he means it. How's it been working with Christian and what type of guy? Is yeah, Christian's my guy. Um, I've known Christian a little bit before I came here um, through some mutual friends with Josh and Kyler, uh, uh, Kyler, Kyle. Um, and all them in Buffalo, um, but definitely a guy that I knew I'd be I'd be tight with when I got here. That is uh, Gabe Davis, uh, Jaguars wide receiver, and kind of wait to see him get on the field. And um, what part of the offense will he be? Obviously, he's got some relationships already with these guys. Uh, Christian Kirk, uh, he talked about him. I can't remember if it was Kirk and Gabe Davis. It might have the same agent. Um, I thought it was somebody that they brought over. Maybe it was Armstead or something like that that had similar agents. But uh, either way, uh, he talked about the, this acclimation process. I thought one of the interesting thing he says is that Doug's already talking about how physical camp is going to be. Now, Doug, the last couple of years, it's 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 a, always been a fascinating view mm -hmm. because he seems like a player's coach, a guy that's played. But it, hard camps. Those guys will tell you they're hard camps. And he might even ramp it up. I feel like I heard more about that two years ago than I did last year. Um so I wonder if he kind of ramps it up even more this year in camp because of the more success they had yeah. uh, two years ago. And maybe they were about the same. Uh, they they might have been. People might have just been used to it last year because they had the whole team coming back. So you heard less conversation about it. Yeah, I mean, I'm always – I wish, like, the NFL would, like, send – a representative to each camp and then they can like rank like who has the hardest camp yeah. each year and year Good out because like how many times like i think very rarely in the nfl does a coach go hey you know how hard we worked last year let's go and take a little bit off it's it's giving easier camp this year yeah guys. no problem like i mean the coaches are always pushing for a harder camp a more physical camp because that's that's how it should be so I believe it. I especially think like when expectations aren't reached, I feel like you almost have like a little more incentive to have a harder camp just to kind of push through a little more. So yeah, I expect the Jaguars to, you know, put the pedal to the metal a little more. But once again, I think that was always going to kind of be the thing. Yeah, yeah, you're probably right. I, I don't know what that means either. That's a good thought. I, I think uh, we, yeah. you know, and here's the other problem we wrestle with: your camp, uh, or even before that, or two a day camps are much more difficult. So a lot of people that talk about these camps, like, eh, whatever, it's not as hard as it used to be, yeah, which yeah. is really true. I mean, they're not as difficult as they used to be. They're not as taxing. Can't get on the field as mm -hmm. much. But the one thing we know here in Jacksonville, built in, it's always going to be a hard camp because of the heat. Correct. The heat alone, I mean, will harden you. But it's also an advantage. <laughs> yeah, and it can be used as an advantage. Mm -hmm. um, so. I'll, I'll be interested to see what these guys say. And you do have newcomers be like, oof, because the, it's not just camp. People yeah. will say Doug practices hard. Mm -hmm. But, again, I think it's kind of an interesting dynamic perception-wise if you lined up all the coaches and said, hey, which guy top three, four, five practices in the National Football League from a difficulty standpoint? You wouldn't pick Doug out. You wouldn't. No, no. I mean, obviously, I always go back to Jim Harbaugh yeah. just because we, we've talked to some players from, yeah. that, that have had him for a coach, and, yeah, they say it's, it's hell, essentially. Um, yeah, it is a little surprising. I mean, especially coming from that Andy Reid coaching tree no like, i think like sean mcdermott 
runs a pretty hard camp. Like I, I, I would I assume. I would assume, right? I, I have no idea, but I feel like the Bills. It would be a tough camp, but like you know, having coming from the Kansas City Chiefs and what we did there and with Andy Reid, like yeah, I mean, any camp's going to be hard. That's right. But like, th- there's there's certain lines of intensity, and I always thought that the Chiefs training camp, at least when I was there, was a little more. Easier than I had to go through with Jack Del Rio and Jackson. Uh, one last note on Gabe Davis, by the way. If you wonder what the injury was, it was, it was late in the season. It was a strained, like, PCL injury uh, to his knee. And so that's what he's they've taken slow and getting back in the fold. And sooner or later, we'll see him out on the field. And obviously, uh, in camp, I think the expectation is all these guys will be ready to go uh, in training camp, which is probably why you hear less and less about the injury part, because by the time the real stuff starts flying, um, they should be in good shape.